Let's rewind a little bit. What we established last lesson this morning was that this is true. The limiting sum of that series, we define it as the limit as n approaching infinity of all the partial sums of this thing, right? And you get one when you do that process. When you think, not just with like adding and subtracting and monkeying around, which we've seen is a very dangerous process. The way you deal with this infinity is you introduce limits, okay? When you introduce limits, that's why we call this the limiting sum. That's all fine, okay? One of the things I pointed out was that it looks as though one of the plausible reasons why a limiting sum does exist for this thing is because every term, as you go to successive terms, they're all approaching zero. So if you want to think about it this way, let's, let's, go, to that, um, let's go to that poor frog that's dying out in the <laughs> desert or whatever, okay? Because each successive distance that gets added is smaller and smaller and smaller. It's slowing down forever, okay? Um, therefore, it seems, to, it seems to suggest if I'm slowing down forever, there will be some limit that I can't get past, right? That is reasonable logic. The only problem is that it's dead wrong. Okay. Now, I'm going to prove that to you um, using this really important result. Before I do it though, I'm just going to tease a little bit. You guys already have enough intuition and enough mathematics to know that just because something is slowing down and slowing down forever, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's some upper limit at which it stops. You already have enough intuition, enough mathematics to know it. I will remind you at the end about what piece of knowledge you already know, which should tell you that this is not enough, this is insufficient. But for now, I'm going to show you this really, really cool way. Okay? I am going to show you the harmonic series. Now, we looked at the alternating harmonic series a little while ago, um, and it was composed of these fractions, right? A half, a third, actually, sorry, I take that back. I think it starts with one. Uh, one, a half, a third, a quarter, a fifth and so on. Those are the fractions that made the alternating harmonic series. What made that one alternating was the plus minus plus minus. Yeah? Okay. So this, the regular harmonic series, just has all pluses. Okay, are you right with that? Now I'm actually gonna write um, a few more terms here. I think I need to go at least up to eight. Lovely. Now this is the harmonic series, okay? It fits this condition. As n approaches infinity, the terms approach zero, each individual term, okay? But what happens to the sum? Is there a limiting sum? Is this, remember our two categories, is it convergent or is it divergent, okay? And the proof for this is really marvelous, okay? Watch. Um, see this series, okay? This series, if all I want to do is prove that it diverges, which it does, even though this is true, okay? What I'm going to do is compare it with another series that I can prove really easily is divergent. Okay, watch. Here's what I'm going to do. If you take this series, okay, I'm just going to write the, um, I'm going to write the first two terms the same, okay? But for the following terms, I'm going to adjust the terms just a little bit. I'm making a whole new series now, okay? But I'm going to, it's going to have enough similarities with this one that I can make a comparison. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace a third with a quarter, okay? You're like, why are you doing that? Okay, you will see why in a second. Um, so I've replaced this guy here, a third, I've replaced it with a quarter, okay? And then the, a quarter stays the same. When I have a look at these terms here, I'm gonna replace one, two, three terms. A fifth, a sixth, and a seventh. I'm gonna replace all of them with an eighth, like so. An eighth, an eighth, an eighth, an eighth and an eighth, okay, dot, dot, dot. Right, and I can continue this pattern forever, right? Now, this is a new series. This is not the harmonic series. But I want you to think about how the harmonic series relates to this new one I've made, right? Notice these, I'll just put them in arrows. These are the terms I've changed. Most of the terms are the same, at least the ones I've written, but these ones I've changed. Now, my new series, right? You tell me, is this series bigger or smaller than the harmonic series. Smaller. Look at okay. It must be smaller. Do you see why it's smaller? You have a look. Lots of it's the same. Like these guys are the same, these guys are the same, these guys are the same. But every term I've changed, every term I've changed, I've made it smaller, right? Um, a quarter is smaller than a third. An eighth is smaller than all of these terms, right? So this new one 
is smaller. In other words, the harmonic series, the actual harmonic series, is bigger than this series. Do you agree with that? New series, smaller than the harmonic series. Okay? But here come the power of um, colored brackets now. Okay? This new series that I've made is very easy to show that it's divergent. Okay? Watch. Uh, you, some of you might have spotted it already. I left these terms alone, but I changed this one. The reason I changed it was so I could group it with a quarter. Okay? Why am I going to do that? Well, just watch for a second. Why did I change these ones all to an eighth? It was so that I could group them with this one eighth. Okay? Now, having grouped them in this way, and you know, if I did the next term, I'd, I'd have a sixteenth, a sixteenth, a sixteenth, all the way up. I'd have eight of them. Okay? What have I got now? How can I rewrite this by, by combining some of my terms? I can say, now by the way, note I said combining. I haven't changed the order, right? We've seen changing order is dangerous. I haven't changed the order, it's all fine. Um, that first term is one, second term is a half. What's this equal to? It's a half. Um, this is four eighths, which is equal to a half. In fact, every grouping that I make subsequently, I just, I cannot be bothered to write how many sixteenths there are and so on. They're all gonna be a half, every single one, okay? This, well, ignoring the one, Hey, ignoring the one. This is a GP with ratio 1, right? And we saw before that if you have a ratio of 1, and it's pretty easy to see, this thing's going to blow up, isn't it? Right? The partial sum of this series here is never going to approach anything. It's going to go a half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half. It'll get as big as you want. It doesn't converge to anything. Okay? So therefore, here comes the logic, okay? Um, so I'm gonna, I would write this out. There's, there's not necessarily a, a neat notation when you say it. Um, since this right-hand side, since the right-hand side of the inequality is a divergent series, or at least it has a divergent series in it, plus a one, okay? And H is bigger than the right-hand side. Therefore, H is also divergent. Because if you're bigger than something that blows up, you're also blowing up, right? So therefore, in one plus we've shown that this guy, even though it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, um, it slows down, as it were, forever, okay? Because the, the partial sums, they do, the gaps between them get progressively smaller, okay? But it never stops at anything. There's no point at which I can say, here's my limit. There's no, you can't go any further than this. If you pick a number, like say 100, okay? If you give the harmonic series long enough, it'll get there. If you say a million, if you give the harmonic series long enough, it'll get there, okay? Now, I said just before I started any of this, right? Um, that you have enough mathematics and enough intuition to know, actually, that even if this is true for an example like this, that doesn't mean it converges. You already know about a kind of function that grows in exactly this way, that slows down and slows down and slows down forever, Logs. but it has a limit. And the answer is log the log function, square right? Roots. Huh? Now, square roots. square roots also do that. Square roots square also roots. do that. But I'm really glad someone mentioned logs because what do logs look like? Right? They look like this, roughly. Okay. Um, What's really, really crazy, if I say, you know, this is y equals natural log of x, okay? So that would mean, um, if I had a value like e up here, that would go to 1. The partial sums, if you take um, s1, s2, s3, s4 of the harmonic series, right? Um, if I plot these, if I actually plot these, I'm going to get values that are about, uh, what's the number? Well, the first one is 1. And then the second one will be two, and then three, and four. In fact, new color. The harmonic series, as it turns out, is exactly the same as the log curve, and it's only off by a constant, right? In fact, that's one of the definitions of the logarithmic curve. It comes from the harmonic series, okay? This isn't just like it. It is a logarithmic function, which is crazy, but the logarithmic function, as you know, 
there's no limit, right? If you want a really, really high number up here, you just need a sufficiently large x, and you'll get there. Okay. So um, this is a this is a famous proof. I can't. Uh, I didn't write down, which is a bit silly. Didn't write down the name of the person who um, first devised it. But it's great because it combines things you already know. It's so short. It's so short, and it talks in terms of things that are actually really important to the course, namely, are things convergent, are things divergent, how do you know? Okay.